He was like, I know how to grow. I'm gonna grow. Let's grow. Not apologetic, dude. I imagine you've been involved in some extent with this Amendment 3. People got to vote on whether you wanted to uh, legalize marijuana for recreational use. But no one read the amendment. Everyone's like, Amendment 3? Oh, that's weed, chick. Someone who, who I know just got in trouble for this. You, They say you can grow up to six plants with this Amendment 3. Everybody can have six flowering plants, six vegetative, and uh, six seedlings. You have to apply for a grower's license, get approved, pay a fee, etc. Also, when you get that grower's license, and this was in the Amendment 3, it opens you up to, you're basically consenting to a search of your home at any day, night, any time they want to come and see what you're doing. So, uh, look little bit of a, we'll call him a dirt to dirt. He was like, oh hell, I know how to grow. I'm gonna grow, let's grow. So he starts growing. So he's got all of his plants. He stays within his six, which is really 18. And then eventually he tells everyone underneath the planet, you know, so he gets a knock on his door. He winds up getting busted and doesn't understand why. He didn't know you had to have that license. So this whole time he's growing and he thinks it's legal. So he's telling <laughs> everyone. You know, he's showing it there. I heard from multiple people, two different people. Do I know that this dude's growing? You know, so he might, for me, I know eight people. You know, he had to have told 234 people for two people to come back to me and tell me about him. So eventually he gets busted and he actually gets hit with a felony cultivation charge. So after all of that, I thought I'm going to kind of reread that uh, Amendment 3. Because everyone was all stoked, and the way they promoted it was that they were also going to drop uh, marijuana charges, previous charges. You know, expunge them from your record, remove the uh, nonviolent offenders from jail as well. Yep. But what they didn't tell you, and what was in the amendment, is that they were only going to do that for misdemeanor crimes. So if you were a felon because of herb, if you got caught growing, if you got caught selling over a certain amount or possession over with an ounce and a quarter... You will not get your stuff expunged. Maybe you'll have a better chance, but everyone thought this was going to be this automatic expungement. But no, it's only for the people who got caught with like a single doobie. Yeah. You know, so now all the dispensaries are open and I haven't been to any, but I do wonder how it went. Like opening day, was there 500 people out of each Fuck one? yeah, there was. I went opening day. Like, I have my medical card. Well, tell me about it. And I get there, and usually it's a couple blocks away from my house. It's never really packed a handful of people in there every time I go in. Well, I went in there this day, and there's a line waiting through the lobby outside. And I'm standing there, I'm like, fuck. Those are know. the people without. Those are the recreational users. Yeah. So it's opening day. Everyone's got it marked on their calendars. Yeah. They got up early. They <laughs> took off from their jobs. And then what happens? Uh, I go in there, and uh, I'm waiting to check in. And the guy in front of me, he doesn't have his card. He shows his ID or whatnot. And the guy tells him, like, hey, you're about an hour, hour and a half wait. Walker. For some herb, yeah. man. He leaves, and I'm about to walk out. But the guy sees me because I got my medical card in hand with my ID. He's like, oh, I'm patient? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, you're going to go that through that door, we'll uh, take care of you immediately. So basically, it's a fast pass. So you get priority at these places yep. compared and to that's the how it dirt works. bags. Uh, yeah, if you're a patient medical card, you have priority over recreational. And it was cool. I walked through there with such an undeserving feeling of entitlement. Like, look at you fucking pieces of shit. I can't have the waiting line. <laughs> and that's crazy that they were. Like, okay, I understand the line. You want to check it out. Glitz and Glamour never been to a dispensary or whatever. But if they tell you it's going to be an hour and a half wait, or even, no, no, let's step back before that. Like I say, these people knew this was the day. They probably took off of work. Probably. They were going to make an all-day thing out of smoking herb when they're probably in their 40s. How crazy is that? Yeah, it's ridiculous. The, the age gap in there was huge. What do you mm. mean? Either very young kids and very old people? Yeah, and everything in between. Now, when you go in there, do they like do they like database you? You know what I mean? Like, are they like okay, I'm gonna scan? Do they look at your ID for your age, or are they like okay, and what's your email and like? Uh, I don't think I had to. They give your email if you want to sign up for like their rewards program or something. But no, they take your ID and they do scan it. Like, do you have to become for. a member to shop no. there? No. See, that's what no. I worry about though, is because of the legality still with uh, firearms. You know, because firearms are regulated federally, so the state nonsense doesn't matter. 
And yeah. on any background checks I do, actually, hell, there's one right over there. Hold up. <laughs> I keep these laying around in case anybody wants to buy a gun. Now we have, and this is your typical 4473 you're going to fill out no matter what state you're in. But if we look down here, it says, are you an unlawful user addicted to using marijuana, legal user, or any other narcotic drug controlled substance warning the use or possession of marijuana remains under federal, remains unlawful under federal law, regardless of whether it has been legalized or decriminalized for medical uh, recreational purposes. So basically they're saying if you use herb, legal or not, you need to check yes here. But spoiler alert, if you check yes, there's about a 95% chance you get an auto denial. And I'm not saying your cousin's Jimmy's baby mama didn't slip through the cracks. Right. But checking yes to any of those boxes is an automatic denial. See, and that's what I've been curious too, because they have a they all have a security guard in there. And what I go to, he's got a piece on him. But he always looked ripped out of his mind when I get with him. I don't know. It may just be his dumb face. But <laughs> well, it also could just be people not following law. But I like, that too. there's plenty of instances, and I know a lot of people are slipping through the cracks. But like, if you get your concealed carry permit and you have your medical card, you legally can have both. But they cannot both be being used at the same time. Meaning, you can have your medical card and you can carry your firearm all you want. And you can have your medical card and you can carry herb all you want. But once you carry both, you're now committing yeah. a federal crime. Yeah, it's, it's like taking your bar in, or your gun into a bar or something. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's kind of crazy. So I always worry about getting on like some sort of a database with these places because I'm a little more susceptible to that. You know, I actually have to have ATF agents in my home and stuff because of my right. dealer's license. Which is a whole. We should talk about that sometime. <laughs> but yeah, I, I do think it, it's 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 crazy. And for me, I know so many people our age who are so excited, but they always use that term, that term for herb. You know what I'm talking about? The they need medicine. They, they need, need their medicine. Yeah. See, you fucking don't like. I, <laughs> I mean, I got it. Yeah, I enjoy the smoke, but you know, my new job is still a no tolerance, yeah. whether you got your card or not. I'm just fine. My blood's not itching. I'm not feeding. I'm trying to give handy J's for a fucking dupe or anything. <laughs> and that's the thing. I can understand, like, potheads saying that in front of, like, the law, just trying not to be prosecuted. Yeah. But they say that amongst... I've been in rooms with multiple potheads who are all saying to each other, yeah, man, we need that medicine, bro. <laughs> but here's the thing. Up. And then I try to question them, and not in a dick way. I'm like, yeah, but you get high off of it, and that's cool. And then they try to act like they don't, or that that's just right. a benefit. <laughs> but let's just cut the nonsense. If 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 this stuff was Tylenol, meaning if you didn't get high from it, you're not going to be paying all that money. You're not going to be smoking it while you're partying. Right. Like, let's just cut the bullshit. I understand. But there's nothing wrong with just being like, Hey, I like to smoke a doobie because it gets me high. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're only in our 30s, but this is going to completely date us. But, like, when we were kids, like, the herb was different. It wasn't, like, crossbred in Dexter's laboratory. No, it was straight some boo-boo full of fucking stems yeah. and seeds. Yeah, you would take my... <laughs> 20 minutes, you'd pull out all the junk junk, yeah. and you'd roll up, like, a big two-and-a-half-gram <laughs> blunt, yeah. you know, a filly, and then you just have fun. You do that now, you green out, and you're comatose for six-and-a-half hours, hoping in your phone uh, doesn't ring. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like, the, the dabs, the wax, I will not touch that shit. But it's... then again, I bet you if we were kids during this time, if that's what we started on, Holy we'd shit. just be like, no, nah, that's just the way it is. And we probably wouldn't have that many ill effects. You know, yeah. it's like if your first drug was meth or something, <laughs> like nothing, you'd Superman, nothing would bother you. PCP man here to save the day. Yeah. And this, I think, too, with that Amendment 3, I wasn't a fan of because uh, increase the taxes. Uh, prices have gone up. Ridiculously now. Because I can remember, you know, we went to them dispensaries a decade ago in LA and yeah. they were taxing you like, I don't know, what was it like 25% or something? Like yeah, it was like, like Looney that. Tunes. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm happy it got legalized for the most part. The only reason that it wouldn't make me happy was like I say, like the potheads, even from our generation, churned and changed into these pusses. <laughs> that like when they don't have the herb and I don't want to hear this non-addictive stuff it's not real like I, I 
I lived with a girl who, if she didn't have it, the world stopped. I've, I've hung yeah, out with dudes like that, who, if they can't drinking. smoke in the morning, they're a complete dick douche. <laughs> you know, like, like, don't get me wrong. If you're going to be addicted to anything, be addicted to that. It's great. Cool. But, you know, I, there's these potheads now, and they're mostly our age. Maybe the kids are doing it, too, but it seems to be mostly, like, 30 to 40-year-olds. And they, they act like they don't use it as a drug and that you're insulting them when you insinuate that they do. Yeah. And that sort of uh, opinion made me want to be like, you know what? I hope it stays illegal. I hope, <laughs> you know. I did see, though, uh, in that Amendment 3, apparently they were only giving out so many licenses for commercial growers and for dispensaries. And that the people who had uh, donated money, there were a lot of people who donated like two, three hundred thousand dollars and they were bigger corporations. One of them out of Arkansas, one of them out of like Santa Barbara, California. And that those people were given priority. Also, people who had gotten in early, and apparently, if you had a little more money to pay down, you could get those uh, uh, those high level cultivation and dispensary licenses early. So, I guess the the way I understood it from it's legal jargon, but from what I read, they built the system here in Missouri to where the big, large corporations will be given priority. They're only given like 173 licenses in the state. I believe it might be 273, something like that. And that it was built in such a way that these corporations are given priority. So your little mom and pop growers are already fused out before it even starts. That's my understanding of it. Yeah, I'm not sure about all that. Which is nonsense because most of these dispensaries around the country, you know, there are the big strands you'll ship in. But due to the legality of shipping across this state and that state, a lot of them will go to local growers. You know, local people who have their their larger scale cultivation licenses. And if they're just going to cut out the local guys around here, you know, I think that's complete nonsense. I don't really if I was to buy herb, I don't want to buy herb that was grown in California. You know what I mean? I want some good herb that was grown uh, (coughs) around here by some dudes who used to be felons. And throughout all that (laughs) knowledge they learned, they learned how to grow some good nug. I want to smoke their nug. You know what I mean? I want to smoke that 417 Highness. <laughs> That's how I remember fucking back in the day. To... But for that dude, yeah, we're going to have grow. to beat that, but yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, little guy we used to know who could grow, yeah. Yeah, and he could grow. Like He'd get some in from, you know, out of state, dispensary or whatnot, and then he'd have what he grew, and you could hold it together, and you can tell which one's which. It was... Nice, crystally colored fucking... Yeah, but from what... did the job. The little bit of tells I'd hear about him, he was pretty foolish, though, of who he let know that he was doing it, who he showed it off to. Like, he walked me right into it. Yeah. Bear in mind, he had known about the troubles I got into beforehand, quasi-involving this stuff, so I think that gave me credit where he knew I wasn't going to run my lip. But still, it immediately made me think, well, who else has been in this room? Who else, the first time they showed up here, you let back here and show them? Because once again, I had multiple people ask me about him, you know, if I knew about his operation. So I would say he was showing it off to everyone. I say he shut down now. He works a normal job. And I actually ran into him at a dispensary the other day. And he was in there first. He'd been waiting. (laughs) And I think we're going to have to fast pass ourselves to next week. Non apologetic news. Non apologetic news.